Welcome to the Collective Perspective. This is a collaborative program with friends that share an interest in the truth as it is, not simply as we wish it would be. Tonight, our featured guest, Reverend Dr. Kathy Hearn, the community spiritual leader of the United Church of Religious Science, now known as the United Centers for Spiritual Living, with Isaac Connor, Joshua Boylan, Leanne Hively and Salako, Celine Yohimas, Ryan Redabaugh, Neil Whitelaw, Matthew Ketterman, Lupe Torres, and Carol Klotz, with music by Matthew Ketterman, Ryan Redabaugh, and the Miracle Choir. To give you an idea of who Kathy really is in my life, I'll just say briefly, for those of you who maybe weren't a part of the first couple shows. Uh, in my spiritual journey, when I uh, moved to San Diego, I had been an atheist not long before that simply because of not having any kind of religious indoctrination in my life and, uh, and then being proposed with this idea of God that didn't really seem to make sense to me. I had an experience at one point it had occurred to me that God did exist, it just wasn't in the form that it had been described to me as. And when I moved to San Diego, I uh, was exploring everything that was in that city that was of interest to me. One of those things was a book signing by an author named Neil Donald Walsh, and he wrote the book Conversations with God, a series of books actually. So we went there, my friend Scott and I, and we're pretty overwhelmed by this place, which this book signing was occurring called the Pacific Church of Religious Science. Didn't really know what that was or what it meant, but we did know we felt really good there, and we saw people genuinely engaged with one another. Uh, there were people that I saw laughing, hugging, crying, but it, was, it certainly was not something that I had experienced in churches previously when I was curious about this thing called church, and that is it didn't seem to be a place that people were simply punching a spiritual time card and then going home. It seemed to be talking about the real stuff of life. And and uh, at that time, I believe the congregation was somewhere around a couple thousand, um, a lot of them homosexuals, which was also kind of reaffirming for me because it showed in, that it was inclusionary. And, um, and Kathy really was kind of the the magnet for all of us at the time. She just had a way of speaking where you felt like you really were being, being spoken directly to as, as opposed to just uh, someone giving some kind of general sermon. But that's, that's a talent I'm sure one has to, to learn and, and develop over time. But, um, but just to say that Kathy was and is a very, very large part of my understanding of the divine in life. So uh, I thank you for that, Reverend Kathy. So can you tell me a little bit about who Kathy Hearn was before she became the person that I know her to be? <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't really know where to start uh, on that. Um, you know, I think I was a person questing. And uh, I had done a lot of different uh, kinds of jobs, and I was looking for, I thought I was going to be a high school English teacher. And, um, and when I had what I would call a mystical experience walking across the USC campus in downtown LA, uh, that suddenly became very uninteresting to me. And I had been studying the American transcendentalists and Eastern religion and, and really I guess hypercharging my mind with ideas about the unity of all of life and being present in the present moment and something really cracked open for me. Um, so I began to be questioning for, um, for my relationship with a larger reality that I was a part of. And, and before that, you know, I think I was just wandering around trying to figure out what my life was all about. Hmm. When you think back to that time, can you remember kind of, uh, I don't know how to put it, maybe a, uh, a creeping up of sorts of, of this, this change, this monumental shift in your life that was going to happen? Hmm. It was more, yeah, I guess so. Because, uh, through, again, through literature and through these, these writers that were talking about the oneness of existence. And then on a personal level, my father died, and that was a very strange thing because he hadn't really been present in my life, but it was a very difficult loss. And I broke up with a boyfriend, and I think those painful things uh, made me available to 
to something greater that wanted to come into my awareness. It was like I got cracked open and able to receive something larger in my awareness. Hmm. You know, one of the things that really struck me when I was at your church, our church at the time, was that our, my story, my, my back story, seemed to coincide with some of your, some parts of your story, such as not having my father in my life. And, and then also once my curiosity really was um, unquenchable, I, I, I went in the direction of Taoism and Buddhism, numerology, astrology, and just, I, I, th <laughs> I think I was looking for one thing that was going to be the end all finishing point and I could completely subscribe to something and then I found that the truth for me really was everywhere and there was truth in all of those things and, mm -hmm. and I remember you telling your story and it seemed somewhat similar can you describe that a little bit yeah after the incident that I related I started going to the Bodhi Tree bookstore in, in uh, West Hollywood and and reading every everything I could get my hands on, and one one book led to another, and I too explored um, esoteric astrology and tarot and the ancient teachings of the ages, and you know, just about just about everything. I think also looking you know looking for that thing that made sense to me. Um, so I think we've traveled the same path, Isaac. Certainly similar. <laughs> Right, and and after that, um, after that was I was up in Seattle, and I came across the writings of Ernest Holmes and the New Thought writers, and that's where it all began to gel for me. Because I was then reading about a system that was highly spiritual, but also deeply practical about living living the spiritual life, and that's what I had been looking for. So, in preparing for this show, I. Some of the things that came up have come up consistently since I became a member of uh, what at one point was the United Church of Religious Science and uh, officially is now the United Centers of Spiritual Living. Is that correct? Right. That's okay. right. And, and that is, uh, is this Scientology because the word science is in there. Mm -hmm. um, but actually religious science is derived from Christian science. Is that correct? You know, it's um, religious science is part of what's called the New Thought movement, and we are related to um, to that the whole lineage of Christian science, but not exactly the same. There was a stream of thought that was, was starting to happen, you know, back in the 1800s, and then had more ancient roots as well. So I, I call Mary Baker Eddy kind of our, one of our relatives. Okay, and I know Carol, you had talked about discovering or perusing at least the new thought movement is that right carol it was listed along with uh jainism sikhism you know some some things that i'd, I'd never heard of and and i hadn't come across in my anywhere but apparently uh, they my beliefs seem to coincide with them uh in whatever way and uh i know that one one question that had been on my mind for numerous years and a person asked me at one point in 1985 he said to me uh, Carol what is the meaning of life and I said I don't know and he said to me is that okay not to know and I said no and that uh, I guess you know was sort of my story in a nutshell you know I, I it's something I, I felt that I needed to find out some way and and like uh, like Isaac mentioned I I believe I was looking for some 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 answer you know that would that would be a very sort of a, a distinct finding and I I have realized that it's a process more so it's a journey uh, rather than a destination I know we have a couple people from varying faiths I don't know if I don't think JR is on with us but he is an atheist and uh, Ryan, I believe you're with us now, yes? I am, hello. Hi, how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Good, good to hear your voice again. Yes. You follow uh, a religious faith, do you not? Um, I grew up in the, the church. I, I, I grew up, I did the, my family was Christian, and um, but it didn't really resonate for me growing up. And high school kind of 